All right, so here is a Bode plot representing the open loop gain of an op amp. Our open loop response, a sub s, is equal to a sub, a sub 0 divided by 1 plus s divided by omega h. a sub 0 is the DC gain of the op amp, and omega h is the high frequency pole of the op amp. Now, if we were to connect the op amp and negative feedback, we know that the DC gain would be reduced. So here, let's say that the DC gain is reduced to a factor a sub prime. Now, the frequency response would actually just follow the frequency response of the op amp until it met the high frequency roll off, and then it would follow the high frequency roll off as is drawn in the figure here. This is called the closed loop response. Now note with the closed loop response that there's a new closed loop high frequency pole, omega h prime, that's higher than the high frequency pole of the op amp by itself. Now the point where the op amp gain crosses over zero dBs or unity, we call the transition frequency or omega t. The transition frequency again is where the gain goes to unity or zero dB. Now from this plot, we can also find a couple of other things. The difference between the DC open loop gain and the DC closed loop gain is equal to 20 log of 1 plus T sub 0. The term t sub zero we call the loop gain. Remember the loop gain is equal to beta times a sub zero. So just by reading the Bode plot, we can find the loop gain. The difference between the zero dB line and the closed loop gain is 20 log of one over beta. So what we can see is that the closed loop gain is reduced by the open loop gain factor, is reduced from the open loop gain by a factor of one plus T sub zero. So this is one impact of negative feedback. The gain is reduced, but it's very stable, or I should say that it doesn't vary much. Also, we see that the high frequency pole is increased from omega H to omega H prime. Indeed, you can show that omega h prime is equal to omega h times 1 plus the loop gain. Now, no matter what happens, the gain bandwidth product is constant. a sub 0 times omega h is equal to a sub 0 divided by 1 plus t sub 0, which is now the closed loop gain, times omega h times 1 plus t sub 0, which is now the new high frequency pole. Of course, you can see that the 1 plus t0 term is canceled. Now, both of these are actually equal to the transition frequency. So when we connect an amplifier in negative feedback, we reduce its gain, but we correspondingly increase its high frequency frequency response by the same factor. Now, one thing we note is that the gain being less than infinity causes error in the output. And so we want to increase the gain as much as we can. We have a couple of different methods to do this. One is using the cascode where we stack transistors. And another is to cascade multiple amplifiers. When we cascode, we stack transistors to increase the total resistance that the GM cell drives. And this increases the voltage gain. But because of the stack transistors, we have less voltage headroom. In other words, we have less voltage range that the op amp will work over. When we cascade, we have a sequence of amplifiers that are connected in series, and the gain is the product of those multiple stages. But it uses more current and usually has worse stability than a cascode. We're going to examine the cascade in the coming days, but Immediately, we're going to look at the cascode amplifier in the next video.